Very quiet, please. Good line. Turn over. Sound running. Proof of five, take four. Action. I'm sure that uh, our producers at HBO must be quite nervous about making sure that we did get the essence of Hollywood. And the one thing that I think everyone felt quite confident about was the sort of extraordinary architecture of San Simeon. And we put together some different pieces of architecture to create our own San Simeon. We haven't been slavish to detail at all. There's one house which we found, which is the house that Wells is supposed to live in. And I think when the Americans... When saw the rushes, they actually thought we must have built it because it looked so Californian to them. So these things exist, you know, it's a case of just finding it. And we've had a lot of palm trees in prop trucks. Action. This film was so tough and so ambitious in terms of the sheer quantity of locations and how little time we actually had to achieve the whole lot in. I mean, we are talking over 60 different sets and locations in an eight-week shoot, so we've just been going from one to another to another. From production to production, you build up a sort of base of people that you work well with. Um, and I think on this production, I pretty much got it really right, actually. Open the door. Open the door to everything you desire. I think if you were trying to make this material for a movie, it would cost three or four times the budget that we have here and consequently employ three or four times as many people. Um, but the trick with television, of course, is to make something on the slightly more limited television budgets, but at a scale that looks like a movie. On this particular production, we did a lot of wrecking around Europe, around European castles and uh, around Bavaria and Germany and Nordschwanstein. We took hundreds of photographs of castle interiors. So these sets are kind of based on medieval castles with all the paint detail and the old wrought iron railing and the ivy. If you look around this set, there's some of the best plastering I've had done on, on sets. And uh, the paint finishes are fantastic too. Now there's some very good tradespeople. A lot of English production designers go and work in America because there is a, you know, there's a very long um, sort of process of growing up in production design here. You have to stay at sort of art director level for a long time. And so by the time you do get to the sort of, you know, the top of your tree, it's, you've had to do a long period of apprenticeship. I find it very easy to work here because there's never a point where I can't find the person I want to do the job. Most of my heads of departments all came from Titanic and they came from GoldenEye before that. We started with our two huge sets. One was here in the 07, which was uh, the interior of a, uh, a nuclear test centre. And down on the paddock tank we had our walkway sets. And to get them to build these sets in time we had two autonomous crews. Our sequence takes place at night which was fortunate for us, but it had been rather terrifying to do it at day because of the huge vistas backgrounds. And to get the depth, we had um, a black backing that surrounded the whole of the set. It had perforations, and we let in fibre optics, and uh, we did them in various patterns to give the effect that there was something else out there. I've worked with Peter and several other UK designers, Norman Reynolds and Tony Pratt, and all of them bring to it a, a true design sense. They really understand uh, the design of a movie, not just from an art department standpoint, but from an overall standpoint. And uh, when you're able to find that, it, things really gel.